So I'm constantly getting email from people who live in an apartment or in a condo and they say, look, I'd like a laser, but I can't vent it outside. What do I do? And inevitably I recommend this. This is the, the standard large format uh, air purifier. It, they generally come apart in, in two and you, you have this huge filter inside that you have to replace fairly often and it honestly doesn't filter all that well. So it's not really a solution. Fortunately, Xtool, who's been very busy building products this year, has released a new product called the AP2, which is Air Purifier 2. It's the second generation of that unit I just showed you. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how they crack this problem. So let's get started. Now I'll start by saying the AP2 is really designed to remove effectively 100% of all the odors and the pollutants in the air coming out of your laser. And at first glance, it might look like an old style personal computer, but in reality, you can take the front panel off. It's just held on there by magnets. And you can see that it's actually a stack of filters and they're all well labeled. And I'll talk a bit about these more individually, but there's a cyclone that sucks air in and gets everything started. Then a, a pre-filter, a HEPA filter, a, uh, a, an activated carbon charcoal filter, a carbon and HEPA filter, which is for finer stuff, and then an ultra fine HEPA filter. And the nice thing is you can remove these individually. So you'd, unlike the old style uh, air, air purifiers where you had to replace a gigantic box, you can replace individual pieces of that stack effectively, and that's much cheaper. The benefit here is they, because the filtering is much more aggressive, they also last longer. Rolling around to the back, we have a pretty simple setup here. We have uh, an input pipe at the top, which drives right into the cyclone, an output pipe, uh, which you could use, uh, you could vent outside, and then a main power switch. Now up on top, we have all the user controls. There's a power control, fan controls, uh, and automatic, and there's a bunch of status lights there, which I'll talk about as we go. So that's really the, the AP2 unit. Now there was one other surprise recently. Uh, Xtool also dropped the IF2 unit, which is the inline fan. Uh, it's a much more compact, higher volume fan than, than you could buy on Amazon. Comes with this handy control which uh, you can mount on the wall and, and touch sensitive buttons. And uh, I'll have a comment about those towards the end. But the IF2 is something that you could use if you're not using an X tool laser or uh, if you're using an X tool laser that realistically isn't the, uh, the P2S because the P2S essentially has this fan built right into it. But uh, you could certainly use it on the P2S as well. So its whole goal is to evacuate uh, your laser and get the air pumped somewhere, presumably the AP2 if, you're, if you can't vent outside, but you could also directly vent this fan outside. Now both the AP2 and the IF2 come with this accessory dongle, which is just a Bluetooth uh, device. And what it does is enable Bluetooth so that your laser can talk to the IF2 or the AP2. And it just plugs into the back of your laser and then you can go over to XCS and connect those devices. But in the first case with the AP2, uh, you can put it in training mode and this also works on the IF2 where you can hold the power switch down for five seconds, about five seconds. And then you'll see the link light start to blink and, it, and that's your key to go over into XCS and and basically add that accessory to your uh, your laser so that now XCS knows that your laser has the addition of either that AP2 or the IF2. And it's really that simple. And then once it's done, anytime the laser's running, that device will also start. And that's a really nice touch. It's totally seamless. Now this only works with the Xtool uh, laser family. If you're using a different laser, then you're you can still use both of these devices, but you'll have to use them in manual mode. And there is four fan settings there. So uh, pretty simple either way, but definitely it's much more seamless with the X-Tool experience. Now it's time to do a real test of the AP2. And I'll admit I've been using this in my shop for a couple of weeks and I've actually used it for a couple of commercial jobs just to really put it through its paces. So I have a pretty good feel for it, but what I wanted to do is compare the AP2 to the original air purifier from Xtool. And again, that air purifier is a rebrand. So uh, there's lots of them that are all fundamentally the same as this, uh, as the original. 
And the setup for this, I'm going to use the P2S for all of the testing and the output of it's going to go over to the, in this case, the AP2. And then I have my output for uh, my test sniff. Same goes with the original air purifier, setup's essentially the same. And uh, that one, I probably won't be standing as close to the end of that pipe to test it. Now, as far as material goes, I'm going to use some, some really smoky stuff. So start with a piece of plywood and I'm going to do a whole bunch of heavy cutting on it. Then I'm going to do the same thing on a piece of acrylic, which has a different smell. And finally, I'm going to use the ultimate stinker. I'm going to use uh, leather and I'm going to cut out some, some circles out of some leather. I'll start with the hardware store plywood and I'm just going to lay it down in the laser. It really doesn't matter where because in XCS I'll drop my design on it. And the easiest way to get lots of smelly cutting is to use a, a living hinge, cut one of those out. Now I don't have the material here in my favorites so I'm just going to go over to Xtools material library and I'm going to grab 3mm basswood plywood. and. Uh, the settings are automatically set for me and those are the ones I'll use. I won't, I won't change from the defaults. And once I get that done, I'm just going to shoot this job over to the laser and you can see the amount of smoke that's being produced there. And I have auto mode on in the AP2 and I'll use the ultimate test here. I'll stick my nose in the end of that pipe and uh, really I can smell nothing here. So uh, all in all, the, the plywood uh, was filtered out exceptionally well, and I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised and happy. Next, I'll drop the acrylic on the workspace, and I'll cut that same living hinge on it. I'll skip the, the XCS step, but I'm using their standard settings. And here you won't see as much smoke coming out, but you will definitely notice a smell if you didn't have any kind of filtering on. Now, when I stuck my nose on here, and I won't make you witness my nose again, but... Uh, there was just enough odor there to know that I was cutting acrylic. It wasn't offensive. It wasn't in, it wasn't filling my shop. It was just a very, very slight hint. And then finally I'll get to my biggest pet peeve in laser cutting and that's leather. Leather smells terrible. It's the smell of rotten meat when it, when it cuts. Uh, and I don't have a, a piece here big enough for a living hinge, but I'll cut a couple of circles. I really don't want to cut leather at all. So, uh, that's about all I'm willing to tolerate. And uh, again, lots of smoke there, but uh, when, I, when I did the nose test, uh, absolutely nothing compared to uh, just cutting without it. Now, when I opened the lid of the laser, there was still some residual smoke and I was reminded why leather is such a bad material to cut. So I reran all of these tests with the original air purifier, just so I have a control for this experiment. And I came up with this final table of results. Now this is an unbiased test, but it is purely relying on, on my nose to, to come up with some kind of a score. And when I look at the original air filter here, uh, cutting wood, I would say it's about middle of the road. I knew I was cutting wood, but it wasn't blowing smoke into my shop. Uh, acrylic was a little bit worse. I definitely wouldn't use this for cutting acrylic for any long-term project. If you're just doing something small, it would be fine. Uh, leather, by contrast, was a complete failure. I stopped my test after it cut, managed to cut about two of those small circles because it was stinking up my entire shop. I had to open my garage door, turn on a bunch of fans to get things aired out. So do not cut leather with this thing. Any amount of leather is unacceptable with the original air filter. Now, by contrast, the AP2, when I was cutting wood, I give it top marks for, for wood. I didn't even know I was cutting wood, honestly. It was just amazing how well it, it was filtering. Uh, acrylic, I mentioned, it, it was not unacceptable, but I, I would say there was enough smell there to know I was cutting acrylic. It was very subtle. I honestly feel I could cut acrylic for an hour in my shop and I wouldn't really notice it. Uh, leather, again, top, top marks here. I, I cut the, the leather circles. In fact, I cut a couple sets of them just to make sure. And I stuck my nose in the end of that outlet pipe and I could smell absolutely nothing. And that shocked me. It was amazing. And maybe I can cut leather again. So those are the results. And again, you're relying on my nose, but, uh, you know, I'm sure if you stuck a particulate measurement on the end of that pipe, you would see very similar results.
Now I haven't talked much about the IF2 to this point, this inline fan that Xtool has also introduced, and that's because I have the Xtool P2S, which essentially has this fan setup already built into it, and I don't have room for another Xtool laser or any other laser for that matter in my shop right now. So. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is use that for a replacement for a current exhaust fan I have on the wall. And that's because this one has those two inline fans that are, are turning out at 14,000 RPM. So they're generating massive amounts of suction compared to any other fan I've ever seen. Uh, and additionally, this fan is also a fraction the size. Uh, Xtool says six times smaller. I don't know about that, but it's definitely smaller than the four inch fan that I had in, in currently in use. And I'm going to replace that one with this one in part because uh, this one has a really nice control that I can use. Uh, th those touch buttons on the front panel, although they're hard to see. Uh, work really well and and that's what I plan to use this for so I did actually try this I have uh, another I have a fiber laser actually a UV laser sitting on my workbench that I'm testing right now and I did a commercial job with that uh, in the past week and I used this IF2 fan for that and it worked amazingly well there was not a stitch of smoke I could literally watch things coming off the laser and get sucked in immediately through the through that fan to the outside so uh, all in all if you if you don't have uh, something like a P2S and you still want good suction uh, for either another X2 laser or uh, any other laser really then uh, I would recommend this fan as well. Now, I, in if you don't have an X-Tool laser, you're not going to be able to use the auto mode, so you'll have to manually turn it on and off, and for some that will be livable. It's certainly worth it to get the kind of suction that this fan can put out. So I wanted to wrap up here and put all of this information into a single package that you can walk away with. and and. The way to do that is to is to talk about some of the highlights of this Safety Pro series and then maybe a couple of things that I think Xtool could still do a little better. Uh, I'll start on the Pro side. Uh, these two products provide real safety, which is which is amazing. Uh, Xtool is kind of alone in the industry paying attention to user safety and uh, this is kind of a, a direction they're headed as they generally work towards making lasers more of an appliance. So uh, nice on nice on Xtool for looking after its users. Uh, the form factors here are really nice. The IF2 is literally a little cube that is not a whole lot bigger than the hoses going in and out of it. And it mounts on the wall. There's a nice wall mount. The AP2, uh, it's a, it's a bit larger than the old model, but it, you, it's easy to access individual filters to take them out. And the whole unit is on wheels, which means you can push it out of the way whenever you don't need it anymore. And uh, finally on the pro side, uh, I'll sum this up by saying these units just work. And if you're using an X-Tool laser especially, you don't have to worry about turning them on or off. They, they just come on and off automatically. But even if you're not using an X-Tool laser, the manual controls for, for controlling things are, are complete. And, uh, and again, they just work. So you won't have any trouble if you don't have an X2 laser either. And you will actually get something that does what it says it's going to do. It's going to eliminate a bunch of the pollutants in the air coming off the laser. Now on the con side, uh, a couple of things here. The, the controls on the IF2, uh, I found them a little hard to use. In fact, when I first plugged this, this fan in, I didn't even know how to turn it on. And I hunted around in the manual to try and find out that there was actually controls on the front of what I thought was a power block. And uh, lo and behold, when I pushed them, they actually worked. But they were very subtle, hard to see. Now, I did talk to Xtool about this, and they said they're going to address this. Uh, so hopefully, by the time you get to see one, uh, all of those controls will be marked with white or some, some sort of paint. Uh, both of these units can be loud, especially when you're running in manual mode on the highest setting. Uh, the IF2, in particular, is like a little jet engine. So... Uh, if you do have it at ear height in your shop when you have it mounted on the wall, you might want to consider putting it in some kind of a sound insulated box just to keep it quiet. Uh, but the AP2 as well, when it's running on high speed, it's a it's a little loud, but it's not loud like, like the IF2. Uh, and finally, 
something to always keep in mind is the cost. Uh, the, the units themselves, I don't think are, are exceptionally high priced. They're a little more costly than you might expect, but they're not out of the ballpark for what you're getting. But you do have to understand that particularly an air purifier has running costs. You do have to replace filters. Now, Xtool did make it easy to change individual filters. And in fact, in XCS, there's a way to see what the condition of those filters is. So you know when you have to replace it. So you don't have to replace something that isn't quite used up yet. So, uh, you know, good on them. But it is something to pay attention to. You do have running costs. Now, if you are interested in finding out more about this, uh, you can certainly go to Xtool's site. If you want to find out more about what Xtool is doing as far as building appliances for, for laser shop work, then you might want to go watch this video up here where I talk about the brand new P2S, where they took an already great laser and made it a whole lot better by, by making it more user-friendly. And with that, I'll wind down and I'll say get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.